All right, if you are, if you are listening just now, you will hear that uh, the song is Jeremy by uh, uh, Sir Victor Waifo, uh, the man who invented the double guitar. Uh, Sir Victor Waifo is a Nigerian legendary musician and uh, has uh, taught and uh, mentored so many people. He's, uh, he's been a commissioner for arts and culture. He's, um, he's, a, he's a musical export for this country. I will celebrate him. All right. Um, I'm, uh, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who stood in for me while I was gone uh, on the on the export drive. What, what, hey, before I go on, do you know that the calories in our food is one thing that makes men have fat, the big stomach that we have. The raw soup from Niger Delta, Atama from uh, Calabar area, Begiri. And all these, all the, the calories inside this food, we should, we should export it to, to Igbo people as well. Stand-up comedy started from Africa. And we took that stand-up comedy. Not that it started as stand-up comedy. Uh, when the slaves were taken out of Africa uh, and picked from different parts of the world, or, of Africa, they were put on the ship. They couldn't speak English. And so... They were speaking all kinds of uh, languages, the dialects that they all were brought from. So the Zulus, the Calabaris, the Shekiris, the Robos, the Jaws, the Kanuris, the Nupes, the Ashantis. And all of these people were taken and put in a ship. And when they landed in America and uh, the Caribbean and all the other West Indies, um, Brazil, uh, India and all the places that they landed, they to translate or speak or communicate and so they started picking pidgin english and so the way they started the pidgin english and the broken english was that if they hear the master say come they pick come they pick food they pick eat so they can tell somebody master say come eat and that was how pidgin english started and then after starting that pidgin english they managed to begin to use that to communicate amongst themselves two things happened one was that they now communicated better because not many people were put together with people who spoke the languages that their original languages. So their mother tongues were now, uh, mother tongues were scattered and they were not anywhere to be, uh, the people who spoke it were not anywhere around them. So uh, because they didn't know who was who, when you finally find somebody who spoke your language, then you were very happy. But most times people have forgotten how to speak the language, and so they managed to speak Pidgin English. And so the Pidgin English was what they then used to entertain. Don't forget, I said there were two things that happened. So that communication worked, but they came with different musical instruments and musical folklore and musical practices and musical systems. And so when they got to farmland, the plantations, sugarcane plantations, the sugarcane plantations, and all of those places, they in the evening would gather and play music. And that was where jazz music started from. Because they didn't understand their languages. They would play songs like Joromi kind of songs and all those kind of songs, and only do a chorus. Because they could only play the instruments since they didn't understand each other's language. That was how jazz music started. And that was how stand-up music st stand -up started as well. That was how stand-up started. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was important that I had to uh, begin to push out the stand-up comedy, and that was why I went to America. I went to America, I went to Canada, I went to the UK as well, and next year we're going to plan to go to other places. So we thank you all the people that sponsored us and all the people that stood in for me while I was away. Uh, thank you. But today... We're bringing it home. We want to crystallize the Pigeon English and entertainment and everything together. Photography. It's going to be a bumper show. You're welcome back. Thank you. Alibaba seriously will be right back. All right, welcome back. Uh, I did tell you that. Um, that we. We're going to go into whatever it is you want to say. I'm sure it is something that it's something that everybody will celebrate. That's that I've even celebrated before you say Wow, wonderful. We thank God. We thank God. Wow. Wow.
Je ne sais pas si je suis là. 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 Je ne sais Uh, from uh, the Herbert to Gundi, yeah. the Ladipo Theatre, Babasala, uh, uh, Babasala, and uh, even MKO Abiola mm. was part of the traveling musicians and uh, dramatists at the time. Um, we we think that, and then Afolayo's father, yeah, uh, who then went into Adelov, Adelov, uh, drama part of our African uh, heritage and it's our best way of expressing some uh, words just like uh, Shakespeare did with his uh, plays. Uh, so today I want to I want to see a different side of Lolo. <laughs> Lolo, the, the airwaves queen. How are you? I'm very fine, thank Madame, you. Madam, Madam, what does that this thing they call you on radio? Um, Oga Madam. Oga Madam. Oga Madam. She she rules the airwaves. She still rules the airwaves, and uh, she's up to new beginnings now. Uh, but today we want to talk about this the Alero. Alero, yeah. the stage play. Mm. So what is Alero about? Um, Alero is a beautiful story. I know a lot of people tell grass to great stories, okay. but most of the time, real the real story is what happens between the before the grass and the grace okay. comes. So Alero, of course, is like any upstarter. She had her own humble beginnings. But the twist to the story is that I, I find out that a lot of people become hit the most in people that oppress them. Okay. You know, most of the time you, you grow up with someone or you live with someone that oppresses you or makes you feel less or kills your self-esteem. And you'll be thinking that you're going to do better. But you find out that people don't do better. Way back, Bella Roche. <laughs> yeah, and that means you just become what you hate so much exactly. and if you do not you know like retrain yourself or just hold yourself back you're just going to fall into the quagmire you're trying to live okay. and that's what ruins people's lives really and that's what the story of Alero that's what the about. story is basically okay. about um, uh, and it's a stage play and it's happening it's happening at the Muson center next week sunday by now i'm hoping we should have finished the second show um, that's when it's happening. What, yeah. what, what do you think is responsible for the resurgence, the new awakening of stage plays? Yeah. And because at a time it went down. Yeah. Uh, when hope videos started, <laughs> and and most people who were the uh, the characters mm. or uh, dramatic personnel, as you say, of stage plays moved, moved into, into movies. It. So yeah. what what do you think is the reason for the resurgence. I think now we're just beginning to open our eyes to see entertainment in it is in, in its entirety. Okay. Now every show is selling. There's so many things that a lot of people will say is not working. Now we are having fashion shows that are selling. We're having art shows that are selling. And stage is the bedrock of everything. Okay. If you're someone that really likes to experience things real life, you know that when you watch a stage performance, that's when the acting is real for you. Mm -hmm. And Alero is like a musical. It's not just stage play. There's music. There's dancing. Everything is coming together for you. So I think people are beginning to enjoy the, the feel of that again. So, uh, so Alero is a, is a collage of creative uh, expressions. Oh, now, yeah. Uh, who who are the actors that we should be looking out for? Um, of course, some of our favorites are Nate, um, Nedu of Wazobia FM, is in it? Crazy as usual. Oh, what, what, what role is he playing? Because he's a multi character. Yes. He's Hausa, he's Igbo, he's Yoruba. And he's he's so playing is is the Hausa gate man. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, so he's at the very beginning of the play, and of course, you know, he's going to set it off. We have Ogbolo playing lead along with me. Okay. He's not doing that gay thing. No, okay. he's a complete man in this particular <laughs> one. He's a complete man. We have um, we have uh, Mr. Tinsel, Mr. Money of Tinsel, that's if I Koko, okay. is in it also. We have Gregory Ojefua, okay. a very prolific actor himself. We have um, Latasha Lagos, uh, a lot of people know as a fashion influencer, but okay. I've been able to like, okay, bring her on stage okay. for us to see 
what she's able to do. And I'm working with SSD Dance Group. It's a, a dance company based from Uni Laurie. Okay. They performed at like four of my events and the fantastic dance group, young people. Okay. So I decided to work with the dance company. Okay. They're based in Laurie, but we've been able to work the they, synergy. They would, they would need this platform. Oh, they're they an amazing group. And ever since I saw them, I'm like, okay, I want to do something with this particular How long have group. you guys been in rehearsals? Ah, we've been rehearsing for months, trust me. You know, we've been rehearsing pockets. The dance team has been rehearsing in Laurie for like, let's say like five months okay. then the lagos troop will be rehearsing drama for like another three months and the music people too have been rehearsing Who wrote separately the script? um it was written by one of the dancers it's called k dance okay and it's directed by um Wal olawale kazim okay i know olawale kazim he's di directed me once uh for a product you know i used to be on stage and you've done everything bro. <laughs> you've done everything on stage in the days of uh, chuck mike mm. and uh, felix okolo and all of the national theater but now then you know, when i so, think so when i think national theater honestly that monument is just supposed to be used a little more uh, I, I think I think there's there's something that is coming, coming up that up. would uh, that would redeem the image of National mm. Theatre. Yes, because every every Children's Day, mm. every year, mm. they have a show at National Theatre. But now my advice for National Theatre, you are doing it for children of seven to ten. Take it further. That's what the country does. You understand? We have been amalgamated since, and we already have like we own our country. It's not that we borrowed it. Okay, let's do something that people from ten to eight, seventeen or eighteen. We'll so we'll take a break. <laughs> when we we'll come back, um, we'll, we'll talk seriously. <laughs> All right. You know, I talked about uh, Nigeria and Africa especially and the way we express ourselves using um, plays. Uh, back in the days, folklore uh, used to be how storytellers would uh, convey a story, the history, the passion and uh, the the behavior of a people the culture of a people onto the children and sometimes it get them to dramatize it and stage play then came on controlled the narrative for a while before we then had tv dramas and from nowhere came living in bondage until living in bondage came we did not know we were living in bondage and so when it came, it broke our eyes, it broke our limitations and the barriers and our eyes were open to the creativeness of a lot of Nigerians. And then we started watching it as home videos. Today, there is uh, the sequel of Living in Bondage. And I have here... Okay, Ramsey first. <laughs> Ramsey, how did this start? How did this start? How did the how, because we had in fact all of us had looked at it that living in bondage was in the past. <laughs> I've forgotten about it. I forgot and for everybody forgot about it. Yes. What made it come back? Oh uh, well, let me give let me give kudos to the guy who actually originated or birthed the idea. His name is Charles Opelike and he's the executive producer. Okay. So we're uh, just hanging out at one of his lounges and he said Drinking, ah, drinking. Yes. Uh -huh. You know at that time that ain't idea there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he now spoiled and said, Look, if we if we did live it in bondage, it would be like a good project. I'm like, Yeah, yeah, come and think of it. Wow, a remake. It's never been done in Hollywood. So I mean let's do it. And then without thought about it also, basically if we're going to do a remake, let's go right from the beginning. Let's start from the very beginning. Let's start with that one. So that's how it all started. And here we are. We have a sequel. And you're part of it. Oh, very well. <laughs> that's why it's a sequel. And the ingenuity of the people behind the sequel is that it includes both a recreation and a continuation. Okay. And you know, a continuation in the fact that it's But you will not be as young as you. No, I cannot be as young as I was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we make up. We will make up. Post production, we can reduce you. <laughs> so, this, uh, this, this young guy here plays you. Yeah, somehow he's my son, as in in this movie. Okay. And somehow the things that happened to me, you know, you know, dived into almost happened to young. 
yeah. so it was like a deja vu absolutely and, and that captured the whole essence of the movie if you sell your soul to the devil he comes after everything through the lineage so okay no don't talk about politicians but just <laughs> Let's not talk about politicians. Let's, let's... <laughs> All right, so so souls were sold to the devil during ballot box. Uh, um, during... <laughs> post production, post production, post production. Uh, and so, um, how how were you chosen for this role? Uh, well, two, okay. Okay. What, what, what were the lines that you read? Do you remember? Yeah. Did they give you a line to read or they just said five or six scripts at the time? Okay. And then yeah, the other actors we read for each other here as against text shots, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of the script that they wanted to see you read. Okay. Alright. And then princess. Yes, sir. How are you? Very well, thank you, sir. How are you? Ah, okay. Yes, so you are the bondage in this? <laughs> 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 okay, so I wish. Okay, so so how were you headhunted? Um for the for the role. For the role. I also auditioned. Okay. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Two close auditions. So it was it was a thorough process. Okay. And um I remember the second audition. Mm-hmm. I was you were not asked sure that you were. In fact, I was asked to speak Igbo. <laughs> they literally wrote a whole, a whole line where they were like, speak to me. I was like, try to learn it for 30 minutes. And then I came. <laughs> but after that, I got called up and I got to play the character Stella. <laughs> how, how, did, how did you feel being part of an yes, institution sir. like living in bondage? It's like. So um, I was talking with uh, a friend who is into casting, yes, and he said, "If you today bring a script and say you want to do The Godfather, the mm. final sequel, mm. and you call some actors in America, some of them will offer to do it for free." Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said because The Godfather had had become. A core part, an institution yeah, in money, Hollywood. Money. Yes. And so when you say there's a sequel or there's a final onslaught of it, of it. Mm. with modern day crime and everything, that people will want to, mm. to of course. be part of it. Of course. So how did you battle with, with that? Because casting now becomes a major issue. Yeah. Because you know now you you won't want to produce anything of less quality that's right mm. and the standards have to be maintained I'm yeah sure. I know that. so who wrote this script um we started with a, a new um a writer her name is nicole and um she did she did fantastically well until she moved out of nigeria <laughs> <laughs> and she was doing well and so we couldn't um keep tabs anymore okay so we had we now had other Contributing writers one okay. way along the line. Yeah. But she'll still get credit for No, yes, yeah, she's still the one. She's still the main yeah, writer. Who's directing? I did. I directed. Genge. 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 It's, not your, it's not your first directorial role. Well, you could call it my first, yeah, uh, um, cinema debut, yeah. You could call okay. it that. But not my first directorial work. Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. five years. This is very five years. <laughs> because she... yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. if it's a visual direct, it's not a fine film. Lord have mercy. It's a wise film. It's a wisdom. To be a wisdom film. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but Nigeria, Nigeria, has, Nigeria has gone past the days when you can shoot the movie in three, four days. Yeah, yeah they've gone. Even as if I don't shoot in three, they four days. Three, four days anymore. <laughs> but you know, those times used to exist when people oh, yes. say, let's knock this thing out and you people start in the morning of. Well, you know, after living in Bondi, you have all those calls and shots in that country. And you don't want to be rushed. No, you just cannot. For the benefit of the film, if I step into your work, I will give you the work on set. Yes, yes. Because what is a collegiate effort to do? When any side ill, war is not in our time. To trouble the rest, yes. Whether it's costume, whether it's location, whether it's. So everything has to be gotten right before you move in. And I had the fortunacy to be playing lead most of the time. Okay. 
and then we could be taken some time. So the other person met me. Okay. So the issue that you are a director or this, this, and that will not give you. Entabani or or balunje. Entabani or balunje. Entabala balunje or balunje. Hmm. Oni baba. When when people man they speak Yoruba. Oh. Is full of consonants, uh, so, yeah, oh, yes. I, because I heard one Igbo man say, Oh, that be open over wow, fortunate. She bobo call over and wait. All right, so there, there, there's this funny thing, you know, when I came into Lagos the first time, so I, I was at 1968. <laughs> I was in the house of well, you're laughing, Abby, you're laughing at your father. <laughs> okay. I was in the house of um, one of my guys, we did our youth service together. So the, the, the uncle was blowing this Yoruba. Big one. And, yeah, and the only thing I knew is was Ben. Ben. Is, so he thought I was here and everything. And he concentrated. And, and after that, now the next day, the brother, the, 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 my friend set me up. He now brought one of the cousins, you know, a pretty girl. So, and he had told the girl, you know, speak Yoruba, then you pretend that you know. That he understands. So the lady that came, you got this one. He has big mouth. I said, Ben. <laughs> Talking about Lolo. Not that way. No, not that way. <laughs> Big shots in Hollywood, and uh, we'll be right back. And we're still talking about the creative industry, greatness, all here. Sumi Smart Co will be joining us soon. Posting this now. <laughs> I'm posting this now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And uh, so I, I, I was just looking at, you know, one of the most iconic black photographs that I've seen. Uh, who's, who's zooming into this? Which one? Which one? Who's zooming into this? All right. So one of the most iconic photographs that I've seen is uh, the left behind. Uh, and and, she, and they left her behind, right? Yeah, they left her behind. Okay. And they left her behind. This was the picture of... Um, picture from the iconic... Sumi Smart Co. And... Uh, you see, photography is not just capturing the moment, it tells a story. And uh, telling the story has to be done by a master storyteller, but this time he's using his photography to do that. Uncle Sumi, you're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, you've, been, you've been in all sectors of Nigerian entertainment, key sectors of Nigerian entertainment. You were in music. Yes, I wasn't in music, I was a drummer. You were uh, uh, yeah, uh, so you were in music. You were the drummer. <laughs> uh, Phil Collins was a drummer. Mm. <laughs> okay, let me just bring that. Uh, uh -huh. So you were in music? You've been a barber. Did you sell clothes anytime? No. No, I was an architect also. Okay, you were designing houses. Okay. And you've been a, a an editor. Yes, editor and publisher. And publisher. I was the first photo editor of the Guardian. And then there was editor one paper Lagos, you interviewed Lagos, me for, Lagos Life. Lagos Life, for the, from the Guardian stable. 19. It started in 84. 84. My interview was 1988. Okay. Yes. Okay, that means we sell filter for just a. <laughs> As a failed comedian, I like <laughs> Yes, 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 that was, that was, yeah, a lot of people I did that for, they did not remember me. Uh, Andy Aporu, what's it? Aporugo. Andrew Aporugo. He was, um, like a general manager. Yes, uh, he was one that, times. yes, he, he, he brought me, he brought me, as, as a, yes, he brought me. He didn't bring me as a countryman, he was overwhelmed no, by the talent. But I saw you, I knew. It's okay, it's okay. So no, we're no, talking no, about, no, no. What? and let me say this. Somewhere, somehow, I was convinced that you had talent. <laughs> See, I've just posted a, a photo online now. We uh, took with the uh, the two women, uh, Pretty and uh, Lord. Okay, DJ, DJ Pretty. And she's uh, yeah. Yeah, I described you as a multi-talented artist and artist, producer, 
And much later, I say comedian. Did you tell them that when I bought my first camera that I came to see you? I didn't tell them who you know. You came to see me to learn, to teach you. And in fact, for about 30 minutes to one hour, I couldn't put anything in your head. All right, so let's <laughs> get Because the thing is, I, I was of a digital generation and the time I went was into Analog. film and yeah. all this was, uh, so I, I, I wanted that's to go to the real, real McCoy. It, but it's not it, working it, now. No, it works. It's now a, this is a classic. If you cannot work in a dark room, work in a dark room, take for example, and go and develop and preach yourself. Mm. You can't really call yourself a photographer. The news would have gone to lead the case. No, no, that's it. That's it. Why are you waiting for the film yeah, to no, develop? At the same oh, time, uh, the day uh, Babangida came to power, yeah. Adolam Barak, I had to run. It was as if I wore sneakers, khaki shorts, and you know, uh, trousers. I ran after his county and go to Abu uh, Dhabi to make a ride to go to Koi. Okay. He was laughing at me. Everybody. But what happened was that the, the camera then I had had a false top. You can remove it. Mm -hmm. So when they said no photograph, I just took it off and gave it to Jida Denny Jones. Mm -hmm. Use my camera, you know, the cam handkerchief. I was wiping wipe like that I had already zoomed. He came out at the room. So the camera and the photograph I took, although it was black and white, was all circulating around the world the next day when, he got when into Nigeria office. had, had, you know, had, a, had new, a new president. new president. So you can do that, but me, my second book is in color, mostly in color, black and white. Yeah, but but this one was more black and white. Black and white. And then the last one, which I uh, this was the one that had okay, yes, this Sumis yes, lens. Yes. The middle Chiniki. When well, Shorinka gave it that title, he wrote the forward. Well, he wrote the forward on the first one. First one, and then this third one. Well, he wrote this one when he became a Nobel laureate. He wrote this one when he was just a natural lecturer. No. I think you had become a Nobel Okay. But we, I remember you be a good be pointing out that that should have been mentioned there. Yeah. Okay. But that one hadn't been mentioned. Okay. And he went through photographs I sent him, and then decided to call you know name it that, and I agreed. This was uh, the upper. No, 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 no. That man, Mr. CTO King, the second. Okay. Was Liberia, Liberia's first ambassador to Nigeria. A Nigerian man married the man by his side. Olabia Kerry, they married his daughter. But the thing about that man is that his father, Sitio King the first, was the president of Liberia who migrated from Sierra Leone to Liberia. At that time, only pro landed property owners could vote. And there were only 16,000 voters. <laughs> Let me finish. Wait, you can laugh later. 16,000 voters. But when they voted, he won by last night 150,000 votes. Think landowners vote. You no, 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 no. There were only 16,000 voters. voters. <laughs> but the man was with the hundred and something. Oh, yes. that. So and he said it so in Guinness Book of World Records and the most read the lecture. <laughs> 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 Ever. 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 I've seen somebody lose an unopposed election in this Nigeria. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actors, what are you doing like this? Actors Guild. Ah uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 On my post. Meanwhile, he lost the election. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but but this 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 is interesting. Uh, you mentioned Sierra Leone now. What's the connection between Sumi Smart Code, Sierra Leone Creole? Is it Creole? Creole, Creole, Creole. That's the K rotten R pigeon English. Sorry. Yeah, not no not rotten. The worry pigeon English is the no, real no, pigeon no, English. Yeah, no no no. That was that's pigeon English spoken in Nigeria because. The Creoles landed here, the returnees, in Lagos, the slaves, the slaves. Returnees. Some of them were not even, they didn't go into slavery, they were on their way. After the British people, uh, the parliament passed the law against slavery, okay. or slave trade, mm. part of it said that merchant navy, the British merchant navy, should capture Anybody? Spanish, okay. that Portuguese boats and French that continued mm. in the slave trade. Don't forget that this was started with, with, with the Wilberforce, yeah, but he had died before the uh, bill was passed. So they started capturing, that's why people like Ajay Crowder okay. captured when he was 12, but they rescued him and took him to Freetown where he was educated. Okay. And of course he grew up 
Or Rabat Bakoli, one of those people? No, 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 no. Rabat Bakoli was Ajay Krada's grandson. Okay. okay. Okay? So don't call him a slave. Okay, no, no. Okay, I, I, I'm not, I, okay they <coughs> came when Brazil was the first country to abolish slavery. slavery. Okay. When the returnees came from Brazil, most of them came from the Rabat territory. They were quartered in a place called Brazilian Quarters in Lagos. Okay. They built their own cathedral, Catholic Bishop Street, the Catholic um, Cathedral, okay. Holy Cross. The Saro people, Saro, you see, when it says Saro, that's Salon. Okay. Uh, it was so they just shot in the Yes. So they were at Olubo. Those of them who were Methodists built the Olubo Methodist Church. Okay. A lot of them were Anglicans. They got permission, got land, and built on the marina. Okay. Yours to the, my grandfather was the, the vicar of uh, um, Christ Church. And they, went, they started building the cathedral from 1970, maybe about 1929. He was the vicar, he was a canon. And then he rose up to become a venerable, what a bishop. They sent him to Abeokuta to start Abeokuta Grammar School. Okay. Don't forget, he went to the first grammar school, secondary school in Nigeria, CMS Grammar School. Then he was followed, he was the detailed one man to go with him, a certain Reverend J.J. Ransom, okay. Joshua Jesse Ransom, Kuchi who later said. became Kuti. Mm -hmm. And then even Fela, I told us, if he knew how that name Kuti came about, he would have bothered to change to Anikula. Okay. Because the Babalawos, those medicine men in Abeokuta said the Christians had come to take their customers. Okay. So one Sunday, one Babalawo, meaning a mercy man, man in order to get climb the pulpit, he was preaching, the man was preaching in the uh, you know, broken Yoruba. They couldn't speak it well. Uh, by the way, they came to Lagos, the family was very dirty. To them, they were, and there were people they called, they were called, they were called the <laughs> uh, Muslims. Uh, when they were fighting, like the Yoruba style, my, 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 my grandfather translated the Quran from okay. English to Yoruba. Okay. So, what are you fighting about? The man you call uh, Jesus is called Isaiah, yeah. just like that. So, he went to Abeokuta to start Abeokuta Grammar School. Later, uh, then he went, he was sent to uh, Ileife to start a Dudua College. Okay. He came back to Lagos in 1942 as the first vicar of All Saints Church in Yaba okay. on Montgomery Road, the one they call Montgomery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he started that, you know, he stayed there till he died on the premises in 1946. So when you say there were traders, they some of them moved to Wari and Sapley, Port Harcourt and Joss. There, there's a, a, a one TV person, I won't mention his name, he's a Saro. But he's he, he, but he's from Mina. Okay. Not Oroko Sima. No, no, no. Okay. So a lot of people, if they were to talk to me, no, please. My grandfather came to Lagos. No, my great grandfather came to Lagos Colony. There was no place called Ghana. I mean, uh, Nigeria. Nigeria at the time. Then my fa grandfather came to school in 1897. Hmm. 18. So yeah, 18. Hmm. The Nigeria came around 1914. Lord God. So you can't call them strangers. Okay, look, but they were living in bondage. Okay, no. No, they, no, no. In Nigeria, <laughs> they had returned mm -hmm. to freedom. Even in Freetown, the city is named Freetown for freed people. Monrovia was named after President Monroe of the United States. Liberia for liberty. Okay, now you you mentioned this uh, this uh, story of uh, so how how did you then decide to not become as your father was a venerable yes my, my, my no not my my your, grandfather. Your grandfather why didn't you my take father that? was also a reverend so why did you follow them that you now went into music no my mother was a member of the assemblies of god church Port real pentecostal i used to be dragged to church but after a while just like like fella i said no i'm the only one i was telling the one young man that one of about fella's three friends that never smoked ago Fela never smoked in more until you. Yes, about 19. <laughs> where, where are you? Where are you? No, no, no. <laughs> what I knew, Fela, when he came back from England in 1963, Yeni was three years old, February 1. 
and I used to go to the house almost every day because there was a time when um, was he smoking a good at that time? No, 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 no. Okay. He couldn't stand anybody who smoked cigarettes around him. He drank only Fanta, not Coca Cola. Until anything. he met Kuala Lumpur. No, until okay. he went to America and met Sandra Daniels. At that time, the government of California had legalized marijuana. You were allowed to carry up to an ounce in your car. And he bought a jerry car. No, no, no. <laughs> and uh, the government, <laughs> um, um, policemen, highway police, we are detailed to carry scales. If it's more than an ounce, they say you want to sell it. Okay. Okay. And he was a, a man from Ghana called Duke. I don't remember his first name. Came here and claimed he knew everybody in Hollywood. Fela followed him to Ghana, I mean to America. And they didn't at that time, no, no, no. At that time, there had been what riots in what they burnt every. But Sammy Davis Jr. guaranteed Frank Sinatra's safety okay. and did Martin. And they would took them to what to what fella. They agreed that the man had something to offer a lot. But my case is that they were working with the man. They were members of the mafia. Okay. They had. Uh, yes, they had. They could yeah, have taken into Las Vegas, but they did it. The, the Italian mafia. They were. Yes. That, that was their So party. when Fela's money got, oh, he got broke. He went broke. The money they took from me are finished. Mm -hmm. People like the drummer Allen, uh, they went to Paris. He's still there. Yeah. I mean, type it. So they now, this woman who was a university teacher, and a student or rather a follower of Angela Davis, that's Sandra Daniels, took him in. So when I went to live in California in the early 70s, people used to have, especially black people, a, 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 a basket. With, uh, like you put bread <coughs> you know, at a table with the, uh, with grass the, vegetable, with the and, vegetable. Yes, and also Rizla for you to ripe your right, yeah, mm. Okay. Mm. So mm. Fela now for that there, um, something he came the woman was the type that said they wouldn't make love, have sex unless they are the vegetable. Like, it happened to me twice. One woman brought cocaine, another one brought by the way they were um, um, naked. I said, please, I don't want. You don't want mm. the cocaine or you don't want I the don't, women? Both. No, no, no. I wanted the women. Uh, so in two years you'll be 80 wow. and uh, you've done uh, how many exhibitions have you done in Portugal? a lot in five continents i've been in five continents okay and visited about 28 countries and you've worked Europe. you've worked huh. in nta no 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 i didn't i was an artist coming like this day now they came okay, yeah in the in 19 what, what was it called then 64 uh, saturday square there was a, <laughs> <laughs> people called, uh, listen people like doug wilcox who was to become a colonel in the army yeah. was presenting it at one time. The uh, number one, apart from Ibadan, WNTV, yeah. this came as NTS, Nigerian Television Service. Then it became NBC TV, Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation TV, until our person just came and changed and it, change to it to NTA. 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 Alright. Not that he changed many things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lolo. Uh, we've been we've been talking with Uncle Sumi, uh, mm. and he's taking some pictures of us. Let, let's let's remember that uh, he's. Uh, let's give him a round of applause. Uncle Sumi, uh, he, he he said he touched me and he didn't enter my head, but all the things he taught me, photography he entered. It's just that the money was not there. He worked for charity a lot of time, but I was young and I needed money. So all right, so. When is your event? Uh, my event is uh, next week, Sunday, 10th of November, at the Muzan Centre. Muzan Two shows, Center. 4 living, and 7. Okay. Living in bondage, coming out? On the 8th. On the 8th of November. 
Friday. It's going to be that. It's going to be the theaters, okay. uh, the cinemas uh, on the eighth of November, which is this Friday coming. Well, but we're doing the, we're doing a, a series of premieres. We're doing we just finished one yesterday in Lagos. We're doing the Abuja one on Wednesday, and then we're doing Enugu and Oweri on um, Thursday, Friday. Are you doing the Enugu because of him? No, because of the origination the of the origination of the <laughs> <laughs> so Ken, yeah, my God. How are you, sir? I'm blessed. Okay. Anytime. So, uh, we what should we expect? Well, from the movie? expect uh, a double portion of what happened in uh, Living in Bondage, the first. One, the first. You know, it's just a classical work of the 21st century that embodies everything good about Nollywood. Expect the best, and I'm sticking my name on it. Mm. All right, <laughs> Stella. Sir, I just love how Okusumi is just over there, like taking it serious. Right, mm -hmm. no, Okusumi is uh, is an old lawyer. He's, 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 he's Okusumi, I think you should uh, discuss with the government now. They should put this history they just gave us here. This no, he has, he has many his, his, the No, no, but the thing that he's mentioned is the government that didn't take his, uh, mm -hmm. uh, his <laughs> suggestions. Uh, pretty. You want to play us out? You want to play us out? I want to say something. I'm not telling anybody to say something. What I want to say is I want to advise SFIS. What ESCC did that you play with you, you have one percent of the money. That far I do the same because I have information for you. I live about just finish a show. So pretty, 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 Seven days after I came out from prison. That was in our time. When the scene. Who was this? He wanted to slap. No, he didn't. He didn't want. He wanted to shake, shake his hand. hand. That's a. Uh, I make a new one. Okay. All right. Then Papa, come Papa, the slapping people for living for what? All right. So, uh, these are some of his pictures. He's done exhibitions and uh, Nelson Mandela right there. Uh, Uncle Sumi. One percent, just give me everything so I want to tell you. I thought, you. I thought you said we are going to talk and teach this young lady who thinks she speaks. Pigeon. Okay, no pigeon, no, no. You're, you're no cre Creole. Your Creole pigeon is better than our pigeon who submits. Okay, your right. pigeon is better than our pigeon. <laughs> I don't agree. Okay, okay. I don't agree. What are you English? Excuse me. Cre Creole pigeon. Worry English is a dying. Oh, thank you very much. I'm a wonder. Why does one of you nobody say? I'm going to talk again another time. Okay. 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 Okay.